On this episode of Dad's Garage, we're going to do the uh, disc brake conversion. We're going to take it from drum to disc at the front end. Make sure we change the back end as well, which is uh, you've got to make sure that the uh, drums at the back suit the uh, disc brake front end as well. You're going to uh, prep the firewall, make sure it's all ready for the 253 to go in. So it's all pretty exciting. We have started some work. It's, <laughs> it's been testing, uh, but we've got to get the brake booster in there. We've got to get everything back on the firewall. It seems to be a few alignment issues. Uh, but working through them, uh, we've got to then start on getting all the wiring uh, laid out, uh, handbrake cables and everything underneath, fuel lines run underneath, brake lines run underneath, uh, all the brake lines across under the, obviously under the, the firewall there. Uh, there's a couple of brake lines to get made, um, going from uh, no booster to uh, a booster. So that means we've got to change the brake lines that go from, uh, from the booster down to the proportioning valve um, uh, just underneath there. So then we're going to... Uh, we're going to put this thing in, a little 253 up. So we've tied it up a little bit more. Got the uh, Dad's Garage logos going on there, looks, looks pretty cool. Um, everything's pretty much ready to go. We've just got some, all the small stuff to, to bolt in place and tidy up. And uh, yeah. Alright, time to put the leaf springs back in. Uh, I've got some new um, bushes to whack in there. So put them in, hopefully it goes all right. I don't know why these ones don't need to be pressed in. I seem to just slide in. But, uh, A bit firmer than I thought. Press that on. Uh, see if we can press it on. Couldn't slide it on. Seems to be working. Thank you, Hack Shop Garage, for a little tip. All right, getting the bush in was pretty easy. Trying to get it back in here has been a pain. Okay, so I've uh, fitted one leaf spring, pain in the ass. Trying to reseat this back here in the in the hangar was an absolute nightmare. That was an hour or so of hammer, wood, block, and the reason is, and I'm not, not, not bagging these particular brands, but this style of bush, uh, you don't need to press into the leaf spring, but it just, my, look, you can see it's sort of spread. Uh, trying to get it in the actual, yeah, anyway. So, went to rear spares, picked up, well, basically the style that came out of it, which has got a metal sleeve around the outside, you just press that in. This one wasn't that hard to press in, just using a, a vice, a bit, of, a bit of grease. Just press straight in, to be honest. It, I reckon I could almost do it just with a, with a, a hand clamp. So, anyway, I could not get... This is the other style. This is the, the one that I had. Uh, sorry, there. And look, they just... It, they're really simple. You just slide them into either end. Nice and easy. An hour of trying to beat the living hell out of it to get it in here. Uh, anyway, it wasn't going in. So, because they hang out past the uh, the edge, you can see that lip there is about what two, three mil each side past. Well, yeah, two, three mil. Sorry. So this one barely uh, juts out. So anyway, as I was removing this. To, yeah, fit the new bearing, new bush, sorry, I uh, crushed my finger because, well, it landed on it. So, because it just, uh, anyway, so I'm in quite a bit of pain right now. Um, but the most annoying thing 
is, if I can just like that, hopefully you can see that. Up into there, push it forward, put the bolt in, done. That's what it should be. I suggest. Go to rare spray, and also at one quarter of the price. Uh, well, at least at least half the price. Um, the kit from Rare Spares, John down at Brisbane Rare Spares helped me out there. Um, and straight in, perfect. I'm not changing the other side, it's gonna take too long, plus my finger is killing me. All right, I'll bolt it in. Here's the little love tap. Five minutes. Uh, now I think, don't quote me on this, HKTG experts, that the, the, the kit that I got, this one, just says HKTG. It doesn't say you, Monaro, Sedan, I be, and also I believe H, uh, so that's TG, sorry. Uh, I believe they are slightly different because the, the kit from uh, Rare Spares actually said um, uh, TG Sedan. Nice. That's so much easier. Thank you, Rare Spares. Thank you, John. All right, now these are not going on that easy, I can tell you. Slowly pressing them on, uh, a couple of turns at a time. Plenty of grease on there. I, I don't know, doing something wrong. So we're going for the drifter look, are we? With the uh, camber. The camber. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that suits the HT. Can't fit that jack under. So we'll get the Winder 2000 jack. Oh, yeah. With the Ugga Dugga. Watch this. Yep, yeah, I think that's on right. Ah, oh, stop it. Uh, yeah. We got Brendan here. We're just going to show us what's happening with the. the so we're just going to do this um, subframe rail yeah. section. We've yeah, got the, the Dino Park. Here. So I've had a bit of a look, and the rust goes pretty far back. So I'm going to cut behind here. I've yeah. got a utilise and steel plate under this bottom face here yep. that we've got to re weld sway bar. into the inside of this piece, yep, cool. so we can still bolt our sway bar back up there. Um, so I'm going to go back here. I've just done a cut with the grinder cut this piece out now we've got a series of spot welds that I'm gonna belt sand off oh yeah well, you um, got a little yeah so I'm just gonna use this grind just a belt uh, sorry just a spot yeah. weld um, and then that piece should separate I've got a little chisel too because sometimes you don't fully get the center of the spot weld so you oh, can yeah. chisel the two faces to separate it well, so once you've ground the face off it then you just yeah, so essentially away. it's just the spot welds holding this on now. Yeah. So I'll get them out of the way and it should come off. Nice. And you'll see what the inside looks like. Hopefully yeah, it's not. Yeah, we, we're not hopefully always, it's not too we're not bad. always looking forward to that. No, so um we'll ignore it. The disc brake conversion. We're going to do what we're going to do is going to be a HTKG um, stock disc brake 
caliper everything. So I've got all the right parts, I believe I've got all the right parts to make sure we do a, a like for like. So currently we've got a drum brake with no booster. We're gonna put in a HKTG booster. Uh, we're gonna put in HKTG front end disc brakes. Uh, and we're obviously gonna run some new um, uh, brake lines. Now we've already done the back diff. It's got a slightly different setup if you go on disc and drum brakes. And I've got, I'll cut in the, the difference uh, in the pads and a different um, slave cylinder. Uh, the proportioning valve I found out is not a proportioning valve. Well, it is kinda, it really is just a block. So if you've got the right brakes in, apparently you don't need a proportioning valve as much as uh, just make sure that the block is evenly distributing, I guess, the, the pressure. Um, the problem I, I'm just concerned about is, I've never done this before, and uh, that it might just go boom. And um, I don't want that to happen. Uh, and once we get all that in, then I'm gonna get someone in just to, to tidy up a couple of the brake lines that are different to the six cylinder. So I got Dylan on camera and he's gonna give me a hand because I got no idea and he's got more of an idea than I do. So we're gonna rip these off and hopefully, not too difficult, we'll have some disc brakes. Yeah, let's do it. No motor, disc brakes. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so we'll take, take the bearing out. Yeah. And then we'll be able to take this whole, whole assembly off. And then we should be able to get access to remove the uh, stub axle and put the new stub axle in, I hope. Oh <laughs> yeah, baby. All right, so I put this jack uh, underneath the lower control arm there, so I'm hoping that'll hold it in place. Got the sway bar off, um, so I'm hoping. Uh, there we go, what's on? <laughs> Nice. All right, that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. We've got another bearing there, but we've got all new bearings and everything. They've been serviced recently. Yeah, no, I got it all. Uh, it's all been done. So I did yeah. the brakes, uh, the, checked all the brakes and everything, and also did the new bearings um, when we got it. Um, new springs went in, new shocks went in, uh, new ball joints went in, uh, new brake lines went in. So yeah, just to make it all nice and safe and when we first got her in there. It's actually in pretty good nick, so. Um, all right, so now we start to, what, right, brake line off, undo, Yeah. take the, the split pin at the top here out of the ball joint, and then undo, and I think we just, what, slowly take that one off, just to make sure she doesn't go pop. I think so how pop. do we, because that's, so you undo that at the bottom, that means we'll have we to lift that to get it out, eh? Up, it'll fall forward. Yeah, well, let's see how we go. What could possibly go wrong, Dylan? I can't think of a single thing. Well, I can think of a lot, actually. I spent most of the night up, uh, up thinking about all the things that go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do, Dee? So we're going to rip these two yep. off here, which is here and here. That'll give us access to the ball joints. Is the bottom one called a ball joint? Ball joint? Yeah. Uh, and top one as well? Yeah, they're both ball joints. Okay, so then we've got to get access to the ball joints and then the steering arm at the back. Mm. So we'll start here. You've got the 18 on the back. Well, this will this'll undo the steering arm. I, oh, yeah, will it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. And this one's tight. Cool. Yeah. Alright, so the steering arm bolts on the back and then bolts over there. But I think we've got... She's out of the way now. Do we still use those? Or do we ever replace them? Do you have extra parts? Um, no, I think we do use them. Oh, well, yeah. we'll need a wheel alignment, probably. Oh, yeah, it's going to get a wheel alignment. Well, will it? I don't know. Cool. All right, so now we got to the ball joints. So we're going to get the split pin out the top mm -hmm. and then do those and then hopefully no one gets hurt. <laughs> we get the brake line off. I need a bigger hammer. All right, so we've done sort of partially und undone this one. Fully undone that one. Top one is coming up there. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. All right, so we got to make sure we. All right, so if we undo that bottom bolt now, we should be right because there's no tension. That that did move up slightly. There you go. All right, cool. 
and that's not going to move. No, that's right because we're on the we're on the jack there. That should hold that in place, and then um, it shouldn't shouldn't. <laughs> no one should die today. Just have faith. I do. I've well, we got our safety boots on. I got my safety boots. I've already kicked my toe. <laughs> I think I videoed the other night my squashed finger <laughs> when I did the, the back. All right, so so we reckon top first. You want me to tap while you do it? Oh, it's out. All right. That can't really help, but I'll say it did. Oh, go. look at that. <laughs> no more drums. Oh, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Back a bit of grease. Back the new part in. Disc brake. Oh, you're in left and right. What do you think? Um, I've got steering arm at the back. I don't really. Oh well. That's there. That's got to be right. Yep. That'll go in. Yep. Perfect. Steering arm at the back there. Across the two. Should give that a clean up, eh? But yeah, we'll do that in a sec. We'll do it a full re refurb. I trust those two. Well, the bolt. All right, and then the and then the disc should just bolt straight through onto that. All right. Should be that easy, yeah. Should. Do we put a little bit of yeah, lubricant on this? Yeah, kind of a little bit, yeah. Give a little bit of a, a little bit of love. And then uh, we should be able to then bolt the... Well, that lines up. Yeah, it should be. Is that that simple, is it? Well. Oh, yeah, okay. So we've got to bolt the um, top and bottom first. Yeah. And then bolt on the, the disc uh, yeah. here. Okay. A bit of, bit of luby, bearing. bit of luby stuff. Bearing and then the these two bolted on. Simple. You reckon? Yeah. So I didn't lose. So I lost sleep over nothing. It's just like Lego. Yeah, it is really. Adult Lego. It's like Swiss cheese, right? Just keep putting little holes in it. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And then eventually, you get it done. Apart from the fact that I broke a bolt under here for the sway bar, which now I'm a welder, I'll be able to get someone else to do that. <laughs> well, we're down to 6% power on the camera. Yeah, okay, that lines up, and then there's that that will line up. Hopefully. Okay, then the caliper is going to go on the front, yeah. which will, yep, cool. And then, uh, but we just need that bloody rear seal for the bearing, eh? We do. It does seem a bit long, the bolts, but that. The seal's around. That's here. all right, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, that's the bearing I've got to get. I don't know why I didn't. I thought I had them. All right. Might be doing a trip somewhere. Just gonna bolt on the spindle. Give it a grease. Bolt that on. Put the pack the bearing and put the rear seal into the uh, disc. Start putting it together. He's nearly nearly finishing the other side. He's just been customising some bolts, which uh, were about a mil too long. Well, how good's that, Makita? It's absolutely. Mate, that is the. In the day, that is the uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. Back Which, when, you know, electricity wasn't what it is today. Yeah. Mate, that's a... Now it's like three times as strong. I should have that there. I better, I better cut that out. <laughs> so you're, um, you're Milwaukee. They're, they're not leaving. They're not leaving, no. No. All right. no once you go to Milwaukee, you, you won't go back. No, that is... They are just awesome, so... Yeah, so you need to leave them here. Um, yeah. Because, oh. you know, well, I haven't got that long anyway, so you'll get them back. Yeah. So, so we're going to pack. Hey, show us how this thing works. You're yeah, brilliant. The grease pot. It's just got grease below the... Uh, oh, it's already in there. Yeah. Okay. And then you just whack your bearing in. Yeah. Screw this on it. Push down. If there's... I think there's some grease left in there. And with a bit of luck, just like that. That's like magic. The brand new bearing is, see it's come through. Yeah, it come, not as much that side, but it has come there and there. Yeah, so you just sort of. And then you massage it in. Give everything a, a good rubbing. And she's, she picked, she's ready to go. Like that. Alright, so that goes in the rear of the yeah. disc and well, then you've got the, the seal. 
pack some in there before you chuck this in. It's messy, but you know, makes it look like you do hard work. Yeah, if you have lazy hands. Yeah, mechanic hands. Yeah, or camera cameraman hands. Give it a good, give it a good finger, and with the yeah grease, nice and put plenty in Just there. Just the one finger, not two. Well, depends on you. Yeah. On the size of the caliper, I guess. Or the, That's right. The disc. Don't get too crazy. Yeah. Sometimes, what is it? Less is more. Sometimes, not like the kebab we just had. Yeah. Had half a chicken on it. Yeah. It was a taco, not a kebab, the way it was folded. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Some of it went in my mouth. It's all over there. Cool. So we've got a pack bearing. Boom. Got that in there, then you've got uh, the seal that just taps into the top. That's right. And dirty fingers. Cool. And then just get that. One of them. Bam. Gone. Who's done? That's it. Cleaner. I've got a mate's going to, um, Darren's going to drop some brake cleaner over. Uh, he works for um, CRC. I don't know. I hope he works for CRC because that's what I just said. <laughs> if he doesn't, thank you CRC for not sponsoring. Not sponsoring. Feel free to. Yeah. No, I'm going to get a, he's going to bring some product over to show me, which would have been good for this, but um, just timing, I guess. Yeah. Is it hitting? Uh, sometimes. What's that? Hold on. Yeah, that's not fucking straight. <laughs> It'll wear away. Why is it hitting there? Hold on. Yeah, it's locked it up. It's about right, isn't it? Well, is it running through? Just give it a rotate. The nipple, I prefer the nipple in the right dead center. Do you like it pointing up or pointing down? Uh, well, I can't, I, don't, I can't remember, but I think it was down. I prefer more than one. Let me check my, my messages. Uh, no, I haven't got a fly. Oh, look, I'm pretty sure he said down. Uh, What's the worst? Get up and do it. Take it off and put it back on. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's up. No, that's down. No, I'm backwards. Hold on. Uh, so what we discovered was, I know, even though I phoned somebody and then forgot what they said. Uh, so you reckon, D, so when you're putting the calipers on. Nipple, like bleeding nipples at the top. Bleeding nipple at the top. What is that? Okay, that's hard to get to that, isn't it? No. All right, but then what happens is you've got this bracket here at the back. Yeah, for the, 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 dust, shield. the dust shield. It's got a, a thread here, but there's no thread in that one, so it's yeah. got to go. So if you put this caliper on, the threaded bit the is threads at the, at the bottom. So that helps that hold all, all the dust shield and everything. <coughs> um, okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. This so, bleeder, we think, to the top. Well, you'd think... Until we find out you'd different. You'd think because, you know, gravity and all that, the bleeder would be at the bottom. But... It's under pressure. I don't think... Yeah. I don't think in this case that's an issue. Looks pretty. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Uh, and the shortened bolts are clearing. Yeah. Which I'll replace later. Yeah, I think we're going to have a few nut and bolt issues. I think I got all the parts and maybe didn't get all the nuts and bolts. That looks awesome. Alrighty. Going well. Alright, so next we gotta connect up all the steering. Cool. Steering box is in. All connected underneath. Front disc are in. Now the booster. And then we'll do uh, probably the wiper motor. Booster wiper motor and the kick down and the um, accelerator uh, linkages. And I think that will be a day. Oh, I want to bolt that in. Have my baby. My baby. 
All right. Seems like the bloody holes don't line up. Don't know how that happens, but anyway. We'll try to slide her in. Gently. Gently. Well, this doesn't work, do you? They're threaded at the top. This is the opposite to what we need. But I can't, because there's only two holes at the top, which don't even line up with this. This won't fit like this at all. So, whoops. Oh, maybe. No, okay. So, but they're, see, they're threaded. This won't fit. This is all. This is not. This is not for this guy. So you've got two threaded bolts, and you've got two threaded holes. You've got one open bolt, and you've got the open, like... Well, if you could think of it like this, we can now drill out the hole. But they don't even line up. Oh, that's that one there. That's way off. That doesn't line up, and it hits on the... here. This that? is not... Um, this is... Hold on. This needs to go right up here. I think this is not the right booster. Which is a very expensive mistake to make. Where'd you get that from? Well, you know, I've got it off um, Larry of Gumtree, which has to be right, right? That's a fail. Are you telling me Larry of Gumtree gave you the wrong booster? Well, I can't see. Those holes don't line up at all, but also, these are, this is fixed bolts. Right, studs, and yeah. they're studs, and they're threaded holes, so they're to bolt in. Yes. And they, and they don't line up. So there's a pinhole there, right? That could be a punch out type thing. All right. So feel behind here. There's a little yeah, like nipple there, there. There is a hole in the in the. So plate, there's a hole there. The backing plate. There's a hole there. Yeah. Pin, pin, threaded. Pin, pin. We just got to drill through the firewall. We just got to drill that out. Which Six. I love drilling firewalls because that's no risk at all of fucking up. Yeah, but we would have better. We're going to have to drill other shit anyway. Really. Still seems to be hitting here, but let's not worry about that. Once it slides into place, let's I think that'll. Drill the chassis. And then yeah, just drill holes and then ask questions later. Worry about later. It seems to be the way to do things. And then. Okay. Paint it if we don't. All right, so that hopefully that'll then fit. Once that goes in, then we'll be able to do that. That will then slide. It's just touching on the edge here, as you can see. All right, let's drill. Drill. Great progress so far on the HTVH swap disc brake conversion. We've just done some work on the, on the firewall. What a pain to get the, the booster in. We had to drill a hole out, didn't know how to do that. Uh, but thanks, Hack Shop Garage, because he bought your video. Um, steering together, kick down stuffy is all in. Uh, I've got to do some work on the accelerator uh, linkage there because it will need a kick down, which it doesn't have. So. All right. So since we've uh, we've converted from uh, drum to discs, we uh, and we've got a booster where we didn't have before, we've got to change some of the lines that go to the. And now it's not a proportioning valve apparently. Apparently, you just keep this, uh, which is a distribution valve. So it basically, uh, you just hook up uh, the booster. And this is what I've been told: hook up the booster to the original distribution valve that just fit the the new lines that go to the um, the master cylinder on the booster so now basically got these two lines that go up to the master cylinder or well, we've got to ex they're uh, obviously a lot further out now we got a booster so they go that bolts to the K frame one's there and one's there I've just marked them so I'll remove those this 
this line here is for the front uh, driver's side brake so that'll remain I'll just clean it up get the schmutz off it um, so that will remain and hopefully now these two these pipes came from HKTG parts and panels Dave there uh, and hopefully they should just be a bolt-in jobby hope yeah, that was a bit dodgy started around just there. All right, so this is a proportioning valve or distribution valve. And I can tell you, I'm trying to get all of the brake lines. And I've still got another one to go in yet. It's gonna go up, up and under. Somewhere in here. And I can tell you, I'm trying to get all of these in here fitted isn't easy all right so brake lines are connected now to the booster master cylinder not sure if they're supposed to go which side of the fuel lines but that's how they ended up still going to connect up the uh, steering box a little bit of an issue there uh, and you know, I'll fix that today and all the brake lines across uh, to the front are all in brake lines connected at the back uh, just going to put the uh, two lines from the from the hard lines to the to the discs on the front and then uh, I think that's ready to put the oil in and pump it up all right so the easy things sometimes aren't that easy so got the blank and you look and you go right north south east west it's got the holes drilled and no this doesn't so I guess I just got to pop a few extra holes in there I mean there are little dimples there for it so put a bit of you want it and put it on all right so time to connect the, the steering box back up so now apparently what I did last time was a bit difficult um, is I uh, had my son push the steering wheel from the inside push that shaft out which we then slide the, um, uh, the, you know, the connector here whatever that's called not really sure well, that one um, basically fit it and then bolt it on and of course I had to take it all apart because then I had to run uh, brake lines and fuel lines, which couldn't get through there. Um, so, but when I went to go do it again, uh, something broke inside, which I, I believe is common, which is a, a plastic part that um, is for like a collapsible steering column. So, phone a friend. Uh, they said just disconnect everything, get some um, pointy nose uh, multi grips, uh, vice grips. Um, lock it in with uh, with those then fit the steering box and magic happens all right steering box is in place good little trick to hold that um, the steering shaft I guess uh, in place so we can then a little bit of a little lube on there just to get this in place if you want. steering box tick brake lines tick just going to do the soft lines. Ooh, baby steps. All right. Can't forget the most important part of a disc brake conversion. The pedal that says disc brakes. All right. Now we did the disc brake conversion, but we didn't get it right. So uh, what I did have was the wrong rear uh, seal. So we actually used the rear seal off the drums, thinking it might fit in. So. Um, and I thought I had it in my kit, but I didn't. So I just ordered the whole kit, it's not much difference in price. So uh, once we put this new rear seal on, should bring this disc just slightly out further, which should uh, align everything perfectly. So right now it's actually pushed a little bit too far. It sort of binds up on the bolts uh, on the whole um, disc assembly here. So uh, we'll rip that off, start again. Uh, I'll use the same um, bearings, they should, should be okay, just have to put the seal in, put it all back together and then she should um, she should be fine from there. You've got to learn from your mistakes, that's just one of them. Let's go.
Okay, so that's another uh, episode, I guess, of the V8 swap. Uh, what we've done in this one, of course, we've done the, um, uh, the diffs gone in, all the suspension in the back's in. We repaired that rust we had at the front there, um, which is great. Thank you very much for that, Brendan. Uh, we've converted to disc brakes with a booster uh, on the front end, uh, pretty much all stock, period correct, um, disc brakes at the front. We've uh, done all the firewall, obviously, uh, everything on there ready to go. Um, steering box, etc., is all back in. Uh, you know, started putting some of the lights, etc., back in. Sway bars, all back in the car. So, hopefully, we've got our silver roller. Uh, we've uh, we've done all the uh, the bleeding of the brakes. We're ready to put the motor in. So that's a disc brake conversion swap. Hopefully you, uh, you got something out of that. Uh, I know it was a bit of a long video. I've got to thank some people again. Uh, Super performance, thank you very much. Uh, Gravel Rush Bluetooth Audio, sponsors of Dad's Garage, help out uh, with, um, with bringing you some content. So uh, also uh, Richard Ewer, uh, he's been very, very helpful. Um, and uh, the guys from the HKTG Club, again, very, very helpful with, uh, with the questions that I have. Uh, great, loving this. Um, doing this with my son. Um, it's what Dad's Garage is all about, getting some mates over uh, every once in a while to help out as well has been fantastic. In the next episode, this is going in the HD. So make sure you do follow uh, Dad's Garage so you can check it out. Um, we may even get it started. Mm, probably not. Anyway, Dad's Garage, thanks very much for watching it. Yeah, now I lost a wheel nut in the front. I don't know how you do that. It's pretty much the nut that's impossible to lose, right? The nipple? I prefer the nipple in the right dead center. Do you like it pointing up or pointing down? Uh, take the right bolts out. Nope. Tip for beginners. They're the right wrong bolts.